at a time when investors are confronted with market volatility and a variety of challenges fueled by the uncertainty of inflation, unsettled geopolitical tensions, and economic pressures, Justin Klein and Steve Peasley stand ready to take your finance and investment questions and share their unbiased answers. This is Invest Talk, independent thinking, shared success. Invest Talk is made possible by KPP Financial, a registered investment advisor firm serving clients throughout the United States. The clarity for your path forward starts now. Here is KPP Financial President, Financial Advisor, Steve Peasley. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Invest Talk. It is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. What do we have? Seven, eight more days before fall starts? Can't wait. Need the, I want the cooler weather. I'm Steve Peasley, and I look forward to, to do this show. I do the show every few days with Justin trading off back and forth. And I do enjoy doing it. I like doing it. And it's here to answer any and all your financial and investment questions. And that's what we do. If you have questions, we'll answer them. Phone number is always the same. It's never changed in 22 plus years. 888-99-CHART. 888-992-4278. So I've got a bunch of stuff to get through today. As usual, we always like to be prepared. My focus point today concerns uh, a story... The market thinks the Fed has an awful problem and recession is the only solution. The market thinks that by what it did today. Okay, so stocks plunge today as everybody, everybody's fearing what the Fed might is going to do. Fed's going to meet what, next week? So what are they going to do? Time permitting, you also get to a few other questions, a few other points. Um, um Morgan Stanley expects further market weakness. What does that mean? How much? How long? Where to hide as the bond market and the stock market both stay weak? Where do you hide your money? Where do you put it? Where do you hide? If you want to hide from the market and the bond market, stock market and the bond market, where do you hide? So we have a couple answers for that. And I want to talk about the Fed meetings coming up. Was it next week? Yeah, I think it's next week. We know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. But we're going to talk. Those are things we're going to discuss. You come first, though. You always come first. Okay? These 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 things I want to talk about is only if time permitting. Callers always come first. So I see we also have some voice bank questions ready to go. Lithium America's Corporation. Lithium. Remember, I talked about that last week and say we're going to have a big shortage of lithium. You know, if we're, if we're going to go through these, uh, go through a, these, if we're going to force electric cars on everybody, which obviously is happening, we need a lot more lithium. Okay, and that's and then we had another question about the energy sector, so we'll get to those. My trivia question is about your retirement. You should have a checklist of what you need for retirement. What is your checklist? I'll tell you what your checklist should be. Okay? So that's what we're going to These are the things we're going to discuss today. The market had a very bad day. The uh, Dow was down 888 points. The Nasdaq down 481 points. That's 4%, by the way, in one day. 481 points. Remember, the gross stocks. Have, do you remember who's been telling you all for months and months and last two years, basically, time to exit your growth stocks? They're still not healthy. And the S&P was down 126 points today. And they have specific reasons why, and we're going to talk about it, why the market fell so hard today. It's all about inflation. It's not about inflation. It's what the Fed is going to do about the inflation numbers that came out. And we kind of know what they're going to do, but now they may do it harder, okay? Harder, more painfully for us and the economy. Okay, let's go. Let's get going. The first listener question from 888-99-CHART. Hey, guys. This is Odin from Texas. Just had one question for you. I was wanting someone to manage some portion of my money 
but I noticed you guys only manage $100,000 and up. So I was wondering if you had any advice on who to go to for around $50,000 to start out managing. Any advice on your show would be greatly appreciated. Uh, love the show. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, you're going to find a lot of money managers willing to take that amount. You will. My problem with finding those money managers is they'll take it even though it's not the only way it's worthwhile to them is push you into mutual funds or annuities where they make a large large commissions. So you gotta be careful. You gotta find that money manager, money manager that is going to take that low amount. And if you still want to be in stocks, not be pushed into ETS and mutual funds. And they probably wouldn't push you to ETS. They don't pay enough to the money manager. So they're going to push you into annuities and mutual funds, and that's not where you want to be, really. That's not. So just be selective, okay? Um, you, you you can also buy just indexing. You can just index different indexes and do just fine. Now, this is not a time to be too aggressive in the market, but, you know, it's going to come pretty soon, in my opinion, to be aggressive, we want to see that next down leg in the market first. But great question. Appreciate it. I know a lot of people probably have that question. 888-99-CHART, 888-992-4278. We're headed into a quick break. Justin Klein and I are happy to, to play your recorded voice bank questions. But we love asking live, answering live questions, everybody. We love them. So give us a call. Again, the number never changes. It is 888 888- 99 chart. Why do listener questions make Invest Talk better? Which of these would you recommend? Because each caller presents fresh questions in their voice. I was curious if you still think aluminum has a ways to go from here. When do I know the right time to take profits? Should I be looking for an exit? Should I be holding here? And listeners instinctively realize that Invest Talk uniquely offers a welcome dose of investing satisfaction. I think you have a terrific show, and I've learned a whole lot. Hey guys, love your show. Uh, I've been listening for several years now, and I've learned a lot. Justin Klein and Steve Peasley understand what investors need and want. I would look at it from a tax perspective. If there's no tax implications, move on, find better ways to use that money. I'm going with the odds. I think a half position now would at least get you in it and get you watching it so you won't lose track of it. Don't forget to call Investor 888-99-CHART. Invest Talk is here to help. And when you download the free Invest Talk podcasts, don't forget to rate and review. The phone lines are open 888 99 Chart. 888 992 4278. My focus point concerns the story behind the headline The market thinks the Fed has an awful big problem, and recession is the only solution. That's what the market thinks the Fed thinks that. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Well, that's what we're going to tick. You know, that's what we got to talk about. Stocks plunge today because of this. Okay, the, why did the stocks go down so hard? Because of inflation. Okay, we had a a surprise uh, a surprise inflation. It didn't go down like it was supposed to. It stayed high. Eight point three percent CPI number, Consumer Price Index. Eight point three percent for August. That's a year-over-year number, 8.3. Remember, the high was like 9, 9.1. They thought it would be less than that. And then if you just talk about, you know, X energy and food, it's still 6.3%. They thought it would be down to 6. See, higher than expected. And remember, oil prices fell. Energy prices dropped 5%. So why was inflation so high? See, and you people know. You people know if you're out there buying groceries, you know how groceries prices have been high, 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 high. How about food, fast food restaurant? You seen how much price jumps they have? Because the price they increase is pretty strongly. All inflation, all inflationary, all of it. So 
What is the Fed solution? And we, we talked about this. So it's that Fed solution is causing a, they won't say this, but their solution is to cause a recession. That's their solution. They won't say this. They won't say, well, we're going to cause a recession because we're going to raise interest rates high enough to make that happen. They won't say it like that. They'll never say it like that. They have never said it like that. What they say is, we need to slow the economy, and increasing interest rates will help slow the economy. What the heck does that mean? That means recession, people. They need, and so, and... The market thinks they're going to raise at least 75 basis points and possibly 1% next week. That's what the market thinks, and that's why the Dow is down 888 points today. And it has to be down 4, 481 points, 4%. And has, I mean, the NASDAQ down 481 points, 4%. And that's S&P down 126%, 126 points. That's what the assumption is by the market. The Fed's going to push us into recession. They're going to raise rates high. And you can't really argue with the Fed about that. You can argue about you people were asleep at the wheel last year when inflation started to take off and you did nothing about it. You can argue that very strongly. I can argue that. We talked about that. We stated that. Now the Fed is, you know, too, just like always, just like always. They are behind the eight ball. I'm not so sure the AP should be so aggressive for raising rates. I'm not so sure about that. Because the full impact of the rates they have already increased hasn't hit, them, hasn't hit the economy yet. It takes months for it to wind its way into the economy. We know that it, it takes, didn't take that long for housing. We see it in housing, right? Mortgage rates 6% for 30-year fixed. At least it reached 6% at one point this last week. Anyways, that's the pain. You know, it's going to be painful. And there's a, there's a good argument saying, look, Fed, if you want to double the rates, is that your goal? Just double the rates tomorrow. Just double it. Pull the Band-Aid off. Don't be pulling it off. Just rip it off all at one time. Get it done. You know, instead of this quarter point, half a point, three quarters of a point. You know, if that's your goal, I don't know what their goal is. They say, you know, you get Fed speak, you know, which is always not very clear. But they're behind. They're behind. They shouldn't be behind, but they are behind. You know, um, now they've got to keep raising rates, very, and they're not doing it fast enough, or they haven't done it fast enough in the past. And may, uh, are they going to try to catch up? Is that the problem now? Now we've got to deal with that? So then, remember, it all comes down to earnings for corporations, right? So if we go into recession, corporate earnings go down, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's what it all is that about. If the market feels the corporate, or corporate earnings are going to go down. Remember, none of these, none of these uh, numbers have said anything about unemployment going up. Nothing. We haven't seen any of that. The Fed needs to change that, too. They want unemployment. They want pain. They want pain to get rid of the inflation. That's what they want. Okay, I've given you my perspective. You can call now with your market, your questions, or your perspective. I'll be happy to listen to it. 888-99-CHART. Now, let's go Let's go ahead and play another call, call a question from Florida. Hello, Stephen Justin. This is uh, Matt from Florida. I've been listening to you guys for a couple of years now. Really like your show, and thanks for all you do. I currently own a small position in Key Bank, that's ticker symbol K-E-Y. I got into this position for a long-term hold. I wanted a little exposure to the financial sector, and also I like that it paid a pretty solid dividend. My question is regarding banks and their debt versus capital ratio. Uh, I could be mistaken, but I believe I heard on this show that you want to see a, in the banking sector a little higher debt due to them providing loans. If I wasn't mistaken, why is that, and what's a comfortable debt-to-capital ratio for the sector? Also, what are your thoughts on, you know, Key Bank as a long-term hold with maybe adding some shares along the way? Once again, thank you for all you do, and hope to hear you on the show. Thank you. And that is correct about debt and banks. Correct. We want higher debt. Now, we don't want to have unreasonably high debt, but we want higher debt. 
Why? Because they borrow money to lend it out. They got to have money to lend out. That's how they make their profits. So Key Bank, Key Corporation, K-E-Y is a symbol, is a holding company for Key Bank National Association. They are a very strong bank. They have really good earnings. It's low price, pays a 4.3% dividend, and they don't have a lot of debt. They should increase their debt. But they're probably anticipating a slowdown economy, so maybe that's smart for them. It's only an eighteen dollars stock, going to make two dollars and thirty nine cents. I like it. Strong company. It is an Invest Talk Tuesday. Summer is fading, everybody. The market is volatile. We we've been saying that, seeing that for a long time. And you have financial investment questions? Well, you can get them answered here. I'm ready. Eight 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 ninety nine chart. You are listening to Invest Talk. Every Friday on the program and the podcast, Steve Peasley shares highlights from the newest edition of the KPP Premium Newsletter. Listen Fridays to Invest Talk. And now, Steve and Justin welcome your calls and questions. 888 99Chart. Hi, uh, can I have your thoughts on buying this stock for a long term investment? L A C. Thank you so much. Bye. Well, this is Lithium Americas Corporation, LAC, Canadian-based company that that is focused on advancing two lithium projects in Argentina and Nevada. Now, I'm sure uh, you've heard me talk about lithium. I'm thinking we're—I know we're going to have a shortage. We've got to find more lithium, and we don't want to be dependent on China's lithium. You see how it being dependent on a foreign country has done. Look at look at how dependent Europe is on Russia, uh, natural gas and oil, and look what's happened since their invasion of Ukraine. Do we want to be dependent on anything out of any other foreign country? Not just China, any other foreign country. Do we want to be dependent on that? So the, these are hostile regimes to us, to the United States. Why would we be dependent on from a hostile regime? Europe did it. Look where it did. Stupidest thing I've seen in a long time. So we don't want to be dependent on foreign lithium projects. We want our own, and we can do it. So I think lithium is going to be a, a, a play, a play. And this is a mining company. They're going to make $0.57 cents next year. They've lost money every year. They're finally going to turn around next year and make money. Because, you know, these are new new, new projects. And it costs money to get these things started. It's a $3.7 billion company, so it's big enough that it should survive. Um, we, want them to, you know, we want them to succeed. So the $31 stock, you're going to have to pay up for these kinds of mining, lithium mining companies. Because well, I'm not the only one thinking this. Neither are you. We're, we're probably late to the game. I mean, lithium has not gone down hardly. Lithium plays have hardly gone down at all this year. I mean, I think they're high. What was their high? The lithium uh, around forty dollars, and here it is thirty-one. It's not bad at all for a market that we've had this year. So you got to deal with it. Kind of like it as a play, but don't overinvest it in it. Um. Morgan Stanley expects further market weakness. What does that mean? Well, if I did my math right, it means about 17 to 27% further down for the S&P 500. What's interesting and what's striking for me, these are their, their in-house analysis analysts. Okay, coming up with this. What's striking is they think it's going to be within four months. Why is that striking? Because it's very difficult to de- 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 to predict a time frame and a call of how deep something is going to fall or go up, for that matter. Okay? And we know the S&P is down what? This is for the S&P they're talking about. S&P is down for 2021 about 14%. It got down to 20%, just at 20% fall, and then came back. And now it's falling again. Okay. Uh, they also see upside for several stocks. In the same article I'm reading, they see upside and they think, they, I guess they're investing in Pfizer and Welltower. Welltower is a REIT for senior housing and also ExxonMobil. 
Those three stocks they mentioned. So I thought I'd pass that along. I'm not recommending those stocks, by the way. I'm just reading what's in the article uh, about Morgan Stanley and what they are recommending. I probably could still get in trouble with the SEC by mentioning them, mentioning them, by the way. We'll see if the SEC comes after me. They may, you know. Okay, if I can, let's go ahead. Let's go do another question. We've got to move a little fast today. Go ahead. Hi, I uh, love the show. I was calling from New Jersey. I'm calling about FANG, F-A-N-G. It's Diamondback Energy. I own it. Just wanted to know what you guys think of it. Uh, I'll be listening on the show. Thank you. I lived in New Jersey after graduating from the West Coast. I grew up in the West Coast, in San Diego, actually. Uh, and I moved from Jer- Jer- to Jersey after graduated from college. And I lived there eight years, maybe nine. not quite sure. can't remember. And just for everybody out there, everybody thinks in the United States that New Jersey is, you know, uh, it's, good, it's called the Garden State. And it deserves that. Okay? New Jersey is beautiful. I mean, it's really got some spectacular uh, flora and fauna. It does. Anyway, FANG, Diamondback Energy, uh, F-A-N-G is a symbol engaged in oil and gas exploration and production of unconventional onshore oil and gas in the Permian Basin. Per- Permian Basin, okay? So it's fracking the area. Okay, they still are growing sales and earnings quite fast. Uh, earnings, uh, they had $11.27 in 2021, which is a huge jump from 5 to $6 they were making a few years before. Next year, they're going to make $26. The year after that, they're going to make $25, and it's a $134 stock. So it's 4 or 5 PE. The range P is 2 to 25. So it's still pretty reasonably priced. You'll, I, I would wait for a pullback because it's pretty high. I mean, for it on the chart, it's pretty high. But as far as it is low price, yes. People in the 50s have a lot on their financial plate between mortgages, adult age, kids who need assistance with loans and other responsibilities. So as we go to break, here's my trivia question. As you get closer to retirement, what are 10 things you should have on your preparedness checklist? Okay. I will supply the answer after the break. My best talk phone lines are open 888 99Chart. If you don't know the numbers, you don't know your business. That's true when your business is growing fast, and even more true when there's a lot of uncertainty. Inflation is running rampant, supply chains are clogged, and labor market is tight. What does that mean for margins? But not every business is in the dark, and NetSuite is helping business owners everywhere. Over 31,000 businesses know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and of course, inventory. So you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place. In 2022, profit is the new growth. So NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your manual business processes, and see where to save money. Know your numbers, know your business, and get to know how NetSuite can be the source of truth for your entire company. Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash investtalk right now. netsuite.com slash investtalk. netsuite.com slash investtalk. Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays. They can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home. 
at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back, and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com. The stock market is volatile. It's constantly changing. So how are you positioned? Is your portfolio properly balanced, or are you taking unnecessary risks? You can get guidance anytime for free if you go to investtalk.com and take the brief risk alize quiz. 888 chart and I give you a trivia question before the break, as you know. So here's the answer. We like to, you know, I always have one. I like the trivia questions. Justin, not so much, but I, I kind of like them. So the question was, as we go to break, uh, you know, as we went to break, um, what are the preparedness checklists that you should have? You need to, you know, you got to be prepared for retirement. What should you check off? Okay, I did this, 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 and this. Okay, number one, have a retirement age goal. How age do you want to retire? What is it? Make Decide that. Make that now. Make that decision now. Automate your savings. You should always be doing that. You should be doing that if very young. If you're not, then that means you've got to automate and save a lot more every time, every paycheck. A lot more if you're starting late. And 70 is a new 65, everybody. 65 was just an artificial retirement. And 65 was an artificial number thought up by the government from Social Security. Okay? You're going to live a lot longer now. Change that thinking. Don't dip into your retirement funds. I've seen this over and over and over. Don't do it. Don't. Live within your means. Pay down debt. You should not have any debt in retirement. No debt. You don't need debt. Pay it off, including your home mortgage. Remember, you're not earning any kind of, you're not having earned income. You're living off your investments. Uh, learn from others like me. Uh, you know, anybody that's done it, they have, find out how they did it. Find a way to avoid tax penalties. Move to Medicare at 65. Consider Medigap insurance. Remember, Medicare doesn't pay for everything, everybody. So you need the additional insurance on top of that. You do. I mean, if you can't afford it, I understand it, but it's not that expensive, and you need to plan for it. So those are the things. Those are your checklist. It's not hard. It really isn't hard. You know, I was talking to somebody. I, I was in Chicago. The, my nephew plays for the Chicago Bears, and they won, by the way. And he had a touchdown, by the way. First touchdown. Well, yeah, you know, I don't want to brag. Um, but anyways, um, I, I sat down with somebody at dinner time, and he asked the question. How, how, did, how do you save for retirement? How did you get to where you were? How, how did you do it? Ask people. Talk to people. Talk to people that are... Don't talk to people that are unsuccessful. I love when someone you know, talks to people about a problem they're having to somebody who has the problem, the same problem, and you're talking to them. That, that, that's, no. Find the problem. Find the people that have the solution to that problem, that maybe went through that problem and solved that problem. Whatever it is. So talk to people that have successfully saved for their retirement. Find out how they did it. Not hard. Okay, let's bring back to Invest Talk Voice Bank. This time the call came from uh, Germany. Hello, Stephen Justin. This is Paulo from Germany. I have a question about the energy sector. It appears to me that the sector is still quite cheap since uh, they are providing solid earnings for the coming years. I'm wondering why that is. Is it because maybe mutual funds are not investing in it with this ESG policy they have? Because it looks like big money is not into this sector anymore. And it's very strange to me that they're, that this sector is still, I mean, not undervalued, but uh, a good place to be. So... And I'm interested in your opinion on that, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah, probably I, I'm going to speculate two reasons. First, uh, a lack of investment in commodities in general. 
Okay, uh, and in the energy sector, lack of investment because all politics and all, everything is death on on oil and death on natural gas because of pollution. So they're going to force us into clean energy. And so that means investors are looking elsewhere because they feel, oh, gee, maybe we should stay out, get out of and stay out of our energy sectors. And I think that's just wrong thinking because I think energy sector is going to be fine for a number of more years, 10, 20 more years, 30 years. Okay, you got to remember that the rest of the world needs the energy too. Okay, and we don't have any great solutions to energy other than natural gas and oil at this point. Is there other solutions? Yes, there are. It's great. No problem. But they're very expensive solutions, and they can't solve the problems. We're not, we, we're not there yet. I think it's going to take decades more. So that's probably why they're inexpensive. Ex, you know, the big oil, uh, their stocks are still inexpensive. Even though they've made nice moves, they're still inexpensive. So that, I think that's why. No one really knows. There's no one correct answer to that. But I do think that's probably the answer. Okay? 888-99-CHART. 888-992-4278. Give me a call. Love to talk to you. So where do you hide? If you don't, you know, the bond market is doing terrible because the Fed's raising rates, so it's done bad. And that's why I tell you to buy bonds themselves and hold them maturity. Don't buy bond funds or ETFs. Don't buy them. Don't buy them. Buy the bonds. Hold them maturity. They'll go back to bar. Even though in between they might go down in value, what do you care if you, they go back to part and they pay you 5%? That's what you're making on the 5%. But where to hide as the bond and stock market stay weak or get weaker? Where should you hide? Well, one of the best solutions is probably short-term bond ETS, very short-term, very short-term, because their rates are increasing. They're paying out more and more and more. Uh, because you know, interest rates are rising, uh, and that does help make some money and hold the line. Going to cash is a problem because going to cash, you're losing value to inflation. At least the short-term bond funds, hopefully you're trying to get close to matching inflation. You may not exceed inflation the, you know, as far as your returns, but it's a, it's a pretty good place to hide. Now, I can say also, you know, you can go to high dividend paying stocks, but those stocks can go down in value. You only go there if you, I mean, they're going down in value. Some of them pay very high dividends. I mean, some of them paying still, I mean, I have 6 7%. There are stocks out there paying that, 6 7%. And they're low price at this point. And so maybe those are things you want to consider buying. Right? But you got to deal with the volatility. You got to hold them long term. And if you're scared of the market, well, then you don't buy, you don't want to be in the market. I, I'm telling you, you should not be as scared of the market. Warren Buffett just said today, you know, uh, you know, you pretty much he said you buy when everybody else is frightened. Okay? When everybody's really nervous about the market, they don't, they hate it. That's when you buy. You have to learn to overcome your fear. And the market's not going away. America's not going to disappear. Uh, you know, we'll, if we go into recession, we go into recession. We've been through many of them in the past. And guess what? The market's always come back and always come back higher than it was before. Always, 100% of the time. We just don't know where the bottom is. You know, I was talking to my wife today, and one of her sisters was calling up about, you know, that she's scared of the market. And my wife said, you know, just don't look at it. <laughs> and that's pretty good advice. Don't look at your holdings if you're frightened. Don't look at them. Let them ride. Let them be alone. Now, if, you have, if you're in poor companies, the companies that are not going to make it, then that's another problem. But... Uh, you know, we don't invest in those kinds of things, do we? Right? No one does it, right? We don't do that. No one does that. Okay? We're almost at summer's end, everybody. Fall is, is coming. Halloween, Thanksgiving, right around the corner, everybody. Halloween. 
end of October, so you got what a month and a half left. Um, so, no matter what, we know there's lots of volatility. We're probably going to get more more volatility. You still have to pay attention to investments. You you don't have to panic over them. You don't have to you know stress over it. You know, as I said, the market will come back, and so will the economy. Even if we go into recession, and we probably are, um, you know, so because the Fed's going to ensure that we do, in my personal opinion. Uh, but, you know, maybe you should consider some, a company like our, ours, KPP Financial. Justin Klein are the owners of the KPP Financial. We're in Orange County, California, between L.A. and, or- and San Diego County. And we have some, you know, a philosophy of independent thinking and shared success. And what does that mean? That means we give unbiased guidance. We practice parallel investing, meaning we buy the same things for ourselves as our clients, same price, same time. We're on the same same side of the table as our clients are. We want to be there. You can call our KPP financial office in Irvine, California. I think after speaking with us for about 10 minutes, you'll begin to see how Justin and I are different and how we maybe make a difference for you in your account. But if you just want advice, we're going to give you the advice free. You don't have to become a client. It's not required. There's no pressure. We're not going to do that. Doesn't happen. But that's not our job. That's what I don't want it to be our job. I know other money managers do that. You know, talk you into buying something. You know, I, don't, I, I don't believe in that kind of philosophy. We really do want to help you. We can help you if you'll let us. We'll be happy to help you. The sooner you contact, contact us, the sooner we might be able to help you. So here comes another uh, Invest Talk listener question asking about value stocks. Hi, Justin and Steve. Both of you continue to reiterate the importance of value stocks in our current and future environment. And rather than asking a particular stock question, I was wondering for someone who's researching, evaluating, and then ultimately purchasing some value-oriented stocks, would be the the major criteria to look for. Uh, for example, whether they'd be mostly large cap companies, dividend pairs, you know, maybe dividend growth, and also some uh, key metrics regarding earnings and numbers to look at. Uh, thanks again, and look forward to your intelligent answer. Bye. Okay, those two qualities you mentioned are a good place to to find value stocks. In other words, large cap. And paying dividends because those ten those characteristics tend to help identify value stocks. But that's not the only thing. Okay, not the only thing. The relationship, the for instance, the relationship between different um, metrics, for instance, uh, PE ratio. Generally, value stocks are pretty low PEs. Generally, growth stocks are very high PEs. Value stocks tend not to be growing their sales very much. They can, okay, they can have a high growth, but then their, 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 their P.E. ratio and the price to sales ratio and the return on equities, those numbers would be very, very much value-oriented, value-oriented okay? Um, they tend to be very financially health. They don't have de- debt, you know, unless they're banks, and it's different, but they usually don't have lots of debt. Okay, they usually have a low price to book ratio. In other words, the value of the company is usually pretty, maybe more, worth more if they just liquidated everything and sold everything off, and you would get more in the per you know, your stock per price, price your your sales per stock than you would is it selling today. So, different kind of value matrices help establish a value company. But where you started with is big companies that pay dividends is a pretty good place to start to look for value. Pretty good. Okay? Good call. Thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Can we fit in one more? Sure we can. Let's go ahead and do that. Hi, this is Roy, and I'm calling from the Central Valley in California. And I'd like to find out about Verizon Communications. The symbol is VZ. I would like to know if this would be a buy, hold, or sell 
for you at current prices. Thank you, and I'll listen for your answer. This would be a buy. Okay, this is, answers the question that we had before. Value stock, Verizon Communications. Let's look at the numbers. They're going to make five dollars and nineteen cents this year. They made five dollars and forty-seven cents a share last year. Next year, they're going to make five twenty-five. It's a forty-one dollar stock. So it's selling at an eight PE. It's five-year range PE range eight to fourteen. Remember, it's at eight. Turn to equity is thirty percent. That's huge. Cash flow is $9.27 a share. Dividend yield, 6.3%. Growth, none. No growth. Okay? But look at, the, look at the numbers. Return on equity, 30%. That's high. Remember, we like ten, in the teens. Okay? Mutual funds are buying this over the last year. 200 more mutual funds, 3,500 to almost 3,800. 300, 300 more. This is a classic value stock. The stock was at $60. Now it's a 41. Can it go lower? Sure. But this is a value stock. Good, solid value. And you're going to collect 6.3% dividend yield while you wait for it to recover. So that answers that question and the question before. Okay. Anyway. That's the kind of metrics metrics that you're looking for. Book value is a little high, 2.2 times book. Uh, It's not super high, but it's higher than I like. Jeff and I are thankful for your podcast support, and our free downloads will continue. I want to make you aware of two other ways you can find our national and unbiased, material and unbiased questions, and let's go to the YouTube channel. 888-99-CHART is our number, 888-992-4278. You are listening to Invest Talk. We've seen the markets go up, then down, sideways, and around. It's called volatility. And if you're a serious investor, you'll have finance and investment questions for Steve Peasley. He's here now taking your calls live. Invest Talk, 888 99 Chart. This is Alan from Haywood, California. I uh, love the show. I just read a book by Joel Greenblatt where he says a valuated index beats a market cap fundamental and equal weighted index over the long term. He's saying that a valuated index beats them all. I just wanted to know if you guys agree or disagree with that. Right now, I'm passively investing in a market cap weighted S&P 500 ETF, and I'm just wondering if I should switch to a value weighted ETF instead. Thanks. Love the show. Bye. I uh, we agree with that. We think value. Uh, we don't. You don't have to think it. It has uh, has outperformed growth over long periods of time. Now. You got to remember, growth outperformed value for what ten years, a long time. Okay, so uh, we we started two years ago saying it's time to think about moving gradually over to value stocks versus growth. Of course, growth was still working at the time, but you know, it, 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 there's patterns and uh, movements in the market that are that are fairly predictable. The timing is always off. No one can time the market. But we knew that value has been so poorly, was, was so poorly performing, and they, they're, they're over time, outperform growth, that it was probably time to start considering your value stock, stack, stocks. And that was correct, and we still think that is the correct thing you should be doing. Long-term value stocks outperform growth. Doesn't mean you don't have any growth stocks. We're not suggesting that. We're saying that your portfolio should be more leaning, have more value stocks than growth stocks. Should have more. You need to be leaning on the value stocks away from the growth stocks. We've been saying that for almost two years now. So, And we still believe it, by the way. You still think you should do that. Okay? 
Okay, and to, you know, I didn't finish, but there are a couple different ways you can get inf our information. You can hear it and see it, and one of them is through the YouTube channel, and the other is Inst uh, being, a, being an Instagram follower. We're building out more content on both platforms. So go to YouTube or invest in or Instagram and search Invest Talk. That's Invest Talk with two T's. And please tell your friends and family, members, everybody. Again, you can call me anytime you want. 888 chart And, you know, the Fed meets next week. Next week. The Federal Reserve meets next week. We're pretty sure they're at least going to put, you know, 0. 0.75, three-quarters of a percent rise in the funds fed, fund, fed funds rate. Okay, that's the only rate they control, that overnight rate. But there's now speculation after today's inflation news, which was not good, and the market reacted very poorly, and the market thinks, and a lot of more people think that maybe they're going to raise it 1%. 1%. To fight inflation, to fight it. Well, what does that mean? What that means is they're trying to push the economy down. They're trying to make it stop, slow it down, push us into recession. Look at the housing market. So whenever you hear everybody, they talk like I talk about uh, fighting inflation. Like, okay, we'll just fight inflation. That is not going to. That no one talks about. Well, how's that? Well, how's that? What is the how's that fight inflation? Raising interest rates by slowing the economy down. The whole purpose is to push us into a much slower economy or a recession. That's the purpose. So don't buy into this. We can do this without going in without too much pain. There's going to be pain. There's already pain in the housing market. There's going to be more pain. Simple as that. You just have to live through the pain. We've lived through pain before. It's not like, it's not that bad. It's not going to crush anybody. You're not going to go bankrupt because we have a recession. That's not. You know, it, the problem is, is workers are going to have trouble and probably have, a, 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 so far the unemployment rate hasn't really been affected, but it usually does. I don't see why it wouldn't this time also. I'm Steve Peasley, and this completes another Invest Talk program. Justin Klein and I thank you for listening, and we encourage you and welcome all new listeners, your friends and family members. We appreciate it, and please tell them. It's free. Our podcast downloads are always free. Through uh, You can download through iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And, of course, if we would like a rating for you to rate us on iTunes, if that's where you download it from, please. Independent thinking, share success. This is Invest Talk. Good night, everybody. Invest Talk is a trademark of KPP Financial. Because of the nature of the interactive dialogue inherent in the format of this program, it's important for the listener to understand that not all comments made will apply to them. Specifically, nothing said shall be taken to be investment advice, or shall statements on this program be considered an offer to buy or sell security. Because such advice is rendered solely on an individual basis and at times will require that the investor review a prospectus before investing. Invest Talk is a copyrighted program of Klein, Pavlis, and Peasley Financial, a registered investment advisor firm which retains all rights. For more information regarding KPP's investment advisors, call 1 800 557 5461. Steve Peasley is president and Justin Klein is chief executive officer of Klein, Pavlis, and Peasley Financial. Thank you for listening, and your comments and questions are welcome on our 24-hour listener line at 888-99-CHART.